Okay, welcome back to part two of sophomore registration, and thank you for bearing with us as we are new to screencasting. Um, but we're going to go ahead, we just have a few slides left, so we're going to go ahead and, um, you know, go from where we left off on part one. So I was in the middle of talking about career cruising and, and ICAP. Um, just to finish that out, uh, freshmen, uh, whatever the freshman level students do in career cruising, it builds upon the following year with their sophomores and uh, what they do for career cruising sophomore year builds upon what they are to do junior year and so on. So um, again, we're just trying to focus on future ready, uh, get them thinking about what they would like to do after high school, um, post-secondary, and career options. College admissions requirements um, go with, there, there's different requirements at different schools. So one of the things that um, we like to pay attention to and that you'll you know start to really want to pay attention to is the region admission index formula. So this is a formula that the state of Iowa uses um, and more specifically it's for you know you and I, University of Iowa, Iowa State. Um, and it is a number that the students can earn. And if they get higher than a 245 in this formula, then they automatically earn entrance into those state schools. Um, this year it is changing a little bit. Um, instead of looking at class rank or the region in the region admissions had decided not to look at class rank anymore. And so what you're seeing here on this screen is the new formula. So as your students take the ACT and as we go through, um, their high school year, we're going to be wanting to pay attention to their ACT score and then their cumulative GPA, and then also to the number of core classes that students um, are taking. And so we will continue to kind of work with your students with that as we go along. Um, but again, from this slide, we just really want you to take away from the fact that, you know, we're not really looking at class rank anymore um, for that region in index. One other thing just to point out is the core classes so that means anything that's in English, science, math, social studies, and world language. So um, a lot of the, the way to really impact your RAI score is to take as many core classes as possible. Um, that will give students um, just a better, R, higher RAI score mm -hmm. in the end. So we have an example here of what this looks like just to kind of put it into practice. So you can see this would be a student who earned a 22 on their ACT, uh, has a 3.2 GPA, and then has taken 17 core classes. Um, and from our experience, I would say 17 is fairly average for how many core classes students take. Um, and you can kind of see they've multiplied those by the numbers that you need to. And so their RAI score is a 247, which means that they will be admitted to Iowa Public Universities. It needs to be, again, higher than a 245. And this is really, really helpful. This is also on our website. We update this list every year. This is the list of core classes that count towards the RAI score. Um, we always kind of have this in mind when students come in and are talking to us about their schedule, especially if we have a student who might be on the bubble, who might be close to 245. Um, when they're choosing certain classes, you kind of want to look at this list and the more classes that you can take that are on this list, the better your chances for having a high RAI score. Okay, so admission types. This is just forward thinking towards after high school because we, we do want them to be thinking about this at all levels. So if a goal is to go to a community college, those types um, of schools only really what you need is a diploma from a high school and then you need some form of placement testing such as the ACT, it could also be the Compass test, it could be um, the Alex test is what Scott Community College normally gives for math placement. Uh, some of these colleges go by their high school grades and how they scored in their English classes in order to place them in English classes at college. So that's an open um, type of, of uh, college. Uh, the traditional type is like the University of Iowa, Iowa State, UNI, uh, Western Illinois, any of those. You re they need a, a specific required GPA to get. Uh, they need an ACT score or SAT, either one. And then they have core course requirements that they have to have met in order to gain entrance. And then we have selective colleges. 
And we're talking like um, Harvard, Yale, University of Chicago, those types. And those colleges are going to view what types of classes they have taken in high school, um, whether they're going to want recommendations from teachers, counselors, um, people in the community. They're gonna, students are going to have to write an essay. Uh, they're looking for higher ACT and SAT scores to get into those. And then those colleges many times will ask us, the counselors, to complete a sheet that looks like this on those students. So we will have to put their class rank in, um, how large the, the class is, their GPA, um, the number of the percentage of students who would normally attend a four-year school, and then we have to rank those students in comparison with their peers as to what kinds of classes they have taken. You know, has it been a demanding schedule where they're taking a lot of honors in AP, or has it been um, less demanding where they're taking more of just the general curriculum? Okay, so this is just another slide saying, you know, how, how does that student compare to their peers. Um, not only, and we have to rank them not only academically, but also in extracurricular things. So I do know that these types of colleges are looking for students who have participated in something for three to four years of their high school career. So maybe if they're in band or orchestra, did they participate that in that for only one year or did they do it for three or four years or show choir or drama? Um, National Honor Society, as many years as they could have been involved in that. And then they also want to know what kind of personal qualities they have. So we have to, you know, um, assess these students on these other qualities as well. Okay, I'm going to talk just kind of briefly about the NCAA. Um, this is for if you have a student that is considering maybe doing athletics division one or division two. Um, a lot of this is kind of done through with the parent and the student. Um, if you go to the NCAA website, you you will register yourself and um, there's some things or whatever that you'll you'll go through and do on your own there. But what where we come into place is we really want to make sure that the kids are taking the, the appropriate courses that they need so that they can, you know, qualify to be division one or division two. If you look on the left hand side, this the division one um side here it says what is recommended or what is required for students to take um, if they're wanting to be a D1 athlete. So four years of English, three years of math, two years of science, one year of additional um, English, math, or science, two years of social science, and four years of additional courses. So, you know, this really falls into line with what we already require, um, but it's just very, very important. Like I said, if you have a student who's thinking about competing at the college level to pay attention to the courses that they're taking and just making sure that they're hitting all of this. Um, and it's the same for the division two on the other side, but you can see instead of four years, they require three years of, Engl uh, of English. A new GPA requirement is starting in the fall of 2018. Um, they will need a, a minimum 2.3 for D1 and 2.2 for D2. So just also making sure that you're paying attention to the GPAs as well. Right. And that 2.3 um, and 2.2 GPAs, that's for their core classes only. So classes like PE, um, industrial tech classes, music, um, art, those are not going to count into that GPA. So this is their core classes of math, English, social studies, science. Okay. And this is kind of um, what we were, what I was talking about earlier. So if it is the parent and student's responsibility, like I said, to register during during their junior year. Um, and there's the website right there for you on the eligibilitycenter.org. Um, you, again, you'll want to check the accepted courses through the Bettendorf High School Curriculum Guide and the NCAA website. Um, the That course list is very similar to the RAI course list. Um, and so just making sure that they're taking the appropriate core classes. Um, and as always, your student should meet with their counselor for any further information or questions. Um, and again, effective, you know, 2016, the NCAA Division I requires 10 core courses to be completed prior to senior year. So that's something else that you'll want to check and make sure your student is doing and also check in with the counselor to make sure that they have that.
Okay, this is, um, again, a list of the, the counselors that we have here at the high school, and we, we are divided by alpha. So if your student has a last name A through D, make sure you can go ahead and um, email Mrs. Harkson with any questions. E through J is Ms. Jansen. K through O is Mrs. Shock. P through S is Ms. Breyer, myself, and T through Z is Mrs. Cole. Um, we welcome emails and any questions that you may have. Um, again, with this, you know, screencast, the weather wasn't working in our favor. So we know this is new for this year. And um, we we really look forward to working with you guys and hearing from you. Um, and thanks for taking the time to watch this.